This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and it's SmackDown time. I love doing SmackDowns. I think you guys generally enjoy them too, but in this case, it's going to be a really tough call. We have on this side the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon third generation, and here we have the Dell XPS 13, the 2015 model. Both two top ultrabooks in their class, but kind of like, do you want the Sicilian big square pizza, or do you want the little round pizza to go? That's going to be one of the biggest deciding factors here as we look at them now. So here we have two of the more desirable business class Ultrabooks for 2015. Both of them new. This is the Lenovo ThinkPad Carbon 3rd Generation. This is the Dell XPS 13, the 2015 edition. Also several generations in at this point, 3rd generation really. Both very nice machines. And the interesting thing right now, you can see just from the difference in the size. And let's even just close them so you can see that. The Lenovo is a 14 inch Ultrabook. Most are 13.3 inches. So that makes it a little bit bigger than usual. But Lenovo manages to keep it pretty much in size range of a 13.3 inch. But the Dell XPS, the, the cool thing about it is it gets down to basically an 11.6 inch form factor, even though it has a 13.3 inch display. So psychologically, when you look at these, you're going to think there's a bigger difference in screen size than there is. But that gets down to important point number one. The most important point for some of you is the brand. That Dell logo, that Lenovo ThinkPad logo. Some of you vastly prefer those machines or are more accustomed to what they have to offer compared to the other. That's going to make a big difference. For those of you who like both brands or who could care less about the brands, there's the size factor. Now the Lenovo X1 Carbon is a very slim MacBook Air-ish kind of machine, but you can see the Dell XP's XPS is just absolutely tiny. So if you want the smallest possible thing to put in your bag, well, Dell scores one point versus any other 13.3 inch or greater Ultrabook on the market, in fact, for this incredible compact design that it's one of the reasons we like it so well. Now, our ThinkPad is no slouch as a machine. And you can watch our full review to learn more about it, but you can see it's very thin and, you know, the ThinkPads are understated black matte rectangles. You can say that about them, but as Lenovo's go, this is pretty darn cool in terms of how slim it looks. It's also quite light. 2.9 pounds is what Lenovo quotes. Now, as Dell tells us, there's often a diff weight difference between the touch and non-touch models. We have the touch screen model here, and our scale says it is three pounds and two ounces, so a little bit heavier with the touch screen as far as our scale can tell. That makes it quite light as ultra books go. Easy to handle, well balanced. Considering it's a 14 incher, that's not bad. The Dell, if you get the non-touch, it's 2.6 pounds. If you get the touch version, it's 2.8 pounds. So it is also a little lighter. Can you feel the difference between 2.8 and 3 pounds? I don't know. I mean, I'm no weight lifter and I, I can't say that you can tell the difference. Plus, given the smaller form factor, this one feels a little dense. Anyway, also very slim, also light, different design aesthetic. Obviously, this one goes for exposing the, the metal here. So you can see we've got this aluminum finish on here. It's pretty hard to scratch. It's pretty darn durable. It also resists fingerprints like mad. When you open it up inside, you get that carbon fiber finish that Dell loves. They used to finish the bottom with that too, but now they're just doing the insides. Looks nice. Shows some fingerprints, not too much. Mostly the trackpad does, and I find actually cleaning this with a damp cloth is important to keeping it working properly. So with our ThinkPad, if we open it up, it's going to be more of the same black inside. You can say it has a very unified looking design right there. And notice it opens up a lot farther than the Dell. That's a Lenovo thing. For those of you who have a need to use this at an unusual wide angle, well, that would be the ThinkPad is the winner for you. And while we have it open, notice track point here. If you're a ThinkPad person, you love the track point, and even better, the dedicated buttons up top, the physical buttons have returned for use with the track point. Both of these have large synaptics track pads. You're going to get more software customization features on the ThinkPad too. Since the Dell goes with that new Microsoft Signature clean track pad driver, i.e. there's no settings really just about on that. You get multi-touch, you get single touch, not too much else going on. So. Those of you who really like to fine-tune your trackpad, you're probably going to like the ThinkPads better. There's been a lot of heated debate also about the Dell's trackpad. Some people love it. Some people hate it. We've liked it pretty well. Like I said, the only thing I noticed, you have to clean the grease off once in a while. It's, it's one of the better trackpads as well, just not as many features. But while we have it sideways, you can see the key relief on this. More key travel here. And now, Lenovo ThinkPads have some of the best keyboards on the market. And despite how thin this one is, it is awesome. I've already written several reviews on this, probably 10,000 words worth. And believe me, I am not going to want to give back this review loaner. If you are a writer, 
this is the keyboard for you. Now the Dell is not a bad keyboard. In fact, it is actually one of the better Ultrabook keyboards on the market too. But you can see how there is less key relief. There is less travel there. It's a well damped keyboard. It's backlit. Both of these are backlit and well damped and they feel nice. But with the Dell, the more I use it, we've had it for more than a month now, the more I notice I've not adjusted and I still tend to bottom out the keys and sometimes double press a letter as a result. So if you have trouble adjusting to very short travel keyboards, the ThinkPad keyboard might be the better choice for you. Not that this is a bad keyboard. Like I said, it is a good one, but it's something to keep in mind, the travel there. Now, bottoms up, this is what you see when you turn the machines over. Both of these are actually pretty easy to open up. With the Dell, you're going to need a Torx screwdriver, a little less commonly available, and you're going to need the teeniest possible Phillips head screwdriver for your ThinkPad. When you open these up, both of these have the RAM soldered on board. So you can order them with four or eight gigs. Eight gigs is the maximum for both of these. So order what you want. You can't upgrade it after the fact later. So they're both the same there. Both of these use an M2 slot for the SSD drive. Both of them typically come with a SATA interface drive. Just because it's M2, it doesn't mean it has a PCIe SSD. Dell said they will start offering PCI SSDs as an option. With Lenovo, the only one that is a PCIe is the 512 gig option, which is a mind-boggling $700 upgrade when you're building the machine. So, you know, given the difference between PCIe and SATA, I would just go with SATA on that anyway. For that crazy price. So both of them pretty much even footing there. Both have socketed wireless cards. Both have Intel Wi-Fi AC dual band and it's a 7265 card which is very good. There's another M2 slot in our ThinkPad and that is for an optional WAN or 4G LTE card as well. Ventilation over here. The Dell, this is a metal bottom. They got rid of the car carbon fiber on the bottom. You'll feel more heat from this. It's not burning hot. It's not going to hurt you. It's not like the laptops of old that got sizzling. But you'll feel some heat here, and you'll hear the fan a bit more often. The compact size, I think, is to, responsible for that, especially if you're using Chrome. Chrome is more RAM intens intensive, more CPU intensive. If you're using IE instead, not so much. The, the ThinkPad, we got our vents here, as you can see, and these are really air intakes just to keep it cool. Not as much ventilation built in, air exhaust out the back. This thing runs so cool and quiet, it's uncanny. And it's not because it's thermal throttling either. And speaking of thermal throttling, both of these have the same Intel Broad, well, fifth generation U series Ultrabook CPU options, Core i5, Core i7 are available, and they benchmark similarly. So you're not really getting a faster machine by going with one brand or the other. You're getting the same performance, same integrated Intel HD 5500 graphics. Neither of these has dedicated graphics. It's still a pretty rare option on an Ultrabook. Now, in terms of ports, there's a couple of differences. Here we have a USB 3.0 port on this side of the, both machines here. This is a proprietary port for the included Ethernet dongle. So one point for Lenovo there, for those who need wired Ethernet, you're not going to have to use up a USB port. Having an RJ45 jack on the machine would be even nicer, but these guys are too thin for that, so that's why they don't. But Dell fights back for a point with the SD card slot. A lot of folks, well find use for that. I mean, just about every digital camera uses an SD card, for example, and if you got a micro SD with adapter and you just want to take something out of your phone and look at your pictures or something like that, it makes it easier. Both of these have lock slots. No surprise there. And on the other side, this is Lenovo's proprietary rectangular charging port with the extra opening here so you can use the one link dock. Dell also sells a pretty nifty dock for theirs that we showed you in our XPS Full HD versus QHD SmackDown. So mini display port, mini display port, full size HDMI also on the ThinkPad. So for those of you who don't want to carry around a mini display port to HDMI adapter, you might like the Lenovo for that reason. Both have the 3.5 millimeter combo audio jack. Dell gives you a little button so you can press it and see the charge that's left in the battery and both have another USB 3.0 port here. Chargers. Dell charger, kind of a stylish looking thing, isn't it? That's nice. <laughs> anyway, other than the fact that it's stylish, what can you say about it? 45 watt charger, fairly compact. The Lenovo, at least our US version, fairly compact, traditional style charger, 65 watts. Now, beyond the different wattages in the charger, Lenovo ThinkPads have rapid charge, and that means it charges really quickly. So for those of you who are on the go a lot, you stop at a layover in the airport, it's amazing. I plugged in the ThinkPad, and I was able to get 50% 
charge in a half an hour. Wow, that's pretty nice. The Dell is a more traditional laptop. It charges slowly. To go from zero to full is about three hours, and it's a fairly linear charging. All laptops are a little quicker in the first half, and then they trickle charge as they get closer to full, but much quicker charging on the ThinkPad. Now, in terms of battery life, this is where it gets very complicated, folks, because the Dell XPS 13 is a kind of weird animal. The non-touch version has much better battery life than the touch version for the Dell, so it depends on what you're talking about. With the Lenovo, the battery life between the touch and the non-touch is not so different between those two models. So, we all know that by now, if you've been watching the Dell review, that the, the XPS 13 non-touch model is the Energizer Bunny. It goes 10 hours, 11 hours, if you're watching your power management pretty well. Touch model is more like a seven to eight hour machine. Our touch model on the ThinkPad is also a seven to eight hour machine. So pretty much even ground if you're comparing touch to non-touch, where the XPS 13 pulls ahead in the non-touch arena versus the non-touch of this. Well, obviously if you're going non-touch, the Dell's going to have better battery life. While we're talking about screens also, this ThinkPad has a anti-glare coating, which is sort of like a permanently installed screen protector on it. it. It helps with glare. You'll still see some reflections. You can probably notice them. One of the reasons it's very noticeable is Lenovo says this is 270 nits of brightness for the touch model. They claim 300 nits for the non-touch model. And we measure 210 nits, which is the same as the last second generation, last slash second generation X1 Carbon. Uh, disabling every kind of display power management on this, that's still what we get. So not so bright. Also, the base model on this, if you get for the non-touch, it's 1080p, which is the same as on the Dell, but it's a TN panel, not an IPS panel. It's not very good looking. You'll see a lot of color shift as you move it forward and backward. This is the IPS high resolution display, so we don't have that problem here. And viewing angles aren't good, so yeah. If you're going base model non-touch, the Dell has an advantage in terms of screen quality because it has a lovely 1080p sharp IGZO panel that looks just superb. And it's also a matte panel. Both of these have a little grain. The Dell is actually a little bit more effectively matte though. Now when we're talking touch, obviously you can see the reflections here. The, the Dell XPS 13 touch model is full gloss. It's so bright though that it, it combats a lot of the glare issues that you might have. It's not perfect, but it really helps a lot brighter, honestly, than the ThinkPad is. 3200 by 1800 sharp IGZO display versus IPS made by LG 2560 by 1440 resolution. Now both of these are very high resolution and Windows desktops don't under, always handle scaling very well. So the difference between those two resolutions, I don't know. The Dell has a much better color gamut. It represents almost the full sRGB spectrum, whereas the ThinkPad Carbon falls short of most Ultrabooks in this price range, certainly since most do achieve almost full sRGB coverage, and it's down at only 85% coverage. You know, it's not going to matter so much if, if you're just using this for work, browsing the web, even watching a movie, it might not pop as much. But if, for those of you who do graphics stuff for a living professionally, if you work with photos or videos for manipulation, where seeing the full color gamut and having better color accuracy count, then score one for the Dell there. In terms of audio quality, both of these have louder and fuller than average speakers for a 13 inch class Ultrabook, you know, anything smaller than 15.6, let alone 17 inches loud, full, very enjoyable. For the webcam, Lenovo has an okay webcam in an absolutely normal up top position. The Dell, as you probably know by now, has the webcam in the bottom corner because it has these near bezel-less display. There is no room up top to put it. So for those of you who do use video chat a lot, either for personal reasons or for business, keep that in mind. Much less flattering, of course, when it's an under the chin shot there, but that is what it is. That's what Dell had to do there. Lastly, there is price. I, Business class Ultrabooks are not cheap things, but on average, comparable Dell models are about $200 less than the ThinkPad X1 Carbon. Now, Lenovo's already started discounting this pretty close to launch, which is unusual. The list price for this is $1199 with the Core i5, 4 gigs of RAM, 128 gig SSD, non-touch. The Dell, similarly equipped, is $899. So you see the difference there. Now, the Dell can go down to a Core i3 if you want. The Lenovo is just Core i5 and i7. You can go all the way up to a Core i7 on the Dell 
if you wish, however. And as you configure these and, and add features on, typically there's still about a $200 price to buy. Of course, for those of you who love the ThinkPad keyboard and want a somewhat larger display, that 0.7 inches diagonally, to be a little bit easier on the eyes and to just have a, a more roomy experience when you're computing, then it's probably worth the $200 to you. If you rather go small and Gee, the teeniest thing you could possibly put in your bag that's 13.3 inches, then well, the Dell is worth it, and you're going to save yourself some money in the process. So that's the ThinkPad X1 Carbon from Lenovo and the Dell XPS 13. Well, obviously from Dell. I'd like to own both of these. So if the decision's hard for you, I can certainly understand. I hope I've made it a little bit easier for you guys to understand some of the fine points, the differences between them. But either way, you're going to be getting a very nice Ultrabook. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to watch our video reviews of each of these and read our written reviews on mobiletechreview.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel.